Tomorrow, or today, depending on when you're watching this, marks the third anniversary of my dance with a beer and sausage only diet. It'll be fantastic. I've done this so much, I should write a book about it. Hmm. What a great idea. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer, your moonwalk through the tranquility base of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and tonight we are concluding our third in a series about setting up your online presence, and this time we're talking about hosting your very own website, like a big boy. Eva, what you drinking over there tonight? Well, I'm going with the Dale's Pale Ale, another standard of mine. As you, as you might imagine, I've had to restock for the upcoming festivities. Um, and so I'm uh, going to start easy and mellow because it'll get crazy before the end of the month. All right, well, good luck with that. Dale's is a great way to start off your sausage fest. Uh, I am partaking in my you know, uh, pumpkin ease of the season here with a shipyard pumpkin head. Since the pumpkin beer started coming out, oh, in like July, I'm already getting a little burnt out on the things, but there's still a few I have to go through, and this is a uh, pretty tasty one. I like it. Not the best of the batch, but not too bad either. Yeah, they must have had a bumper squash year because, yeah, they were right. The uh, the pumpkin beers came out very early to get ahead of the season, but it's okay. I don't I don't mind them at all. Well, as my partner Jeff mentioned, third part of our author website series and here's where we get all fancy and stuff for the first one we talked about just a nameplate site and you can check all of these out at our website at booksandbeer.com uh, links to all those old videos first one was a nameplate website and the second one was using free blogging platforms and now we're going to the dark side. Before we jump into that, Jeff, I want you to answer some questions. Um, I'm not sure we did a good job with this on our last two shows, but why should authors really be doing this? Let's have a quick conversation of some of the pros and the cons of why an author might want his or her own website on his or her own domain. Well, I think the biggest reason is just, I mean, for me, versatility. I like having control. I like being able to, if I want to write a big long post or change things around, change my look and feel, connect it with other sites, I can do whatever I want. If you've got your own domain, you've got the you've got the full set of keys. So that's my number one reason. Um, I think that it's also for authors a really good way to showcase their own writing. I mean, you can put a lot more detailed content um, in there. You can, I mean, on, on some of the hosted platforms we discussed last time, you can do that to an extent, but if you really want to develop an online repository of content in all shapes and sizes, your own site is a great way to do that. Yeah, I agree, and I think there's also, um, you know, not only could you have your own PDFs of your books up there and your own online storefront if that's what you wanted to get to, um, it, it really helps you I want to say set a stage, become something different, really set yourself apart. You can have your own branding option out there. We, we, we talked about some ways to make the other ones a little bit more customized, and you talked about it with the versatility, but you can really do a lot more. You can put social plugins across everything. You can really look the way you want to look and own, really own your overall presence online, which is a, which is a great thing for an author who truly has thought about building their own brand I think ultimately the, really the only way you can do that um, are with some of the types of tools we're going to talk about on the program today. And not just building their own brand, but building an interaction with their fan base. Going all the way back to the other end of the spectrum, we talked about Blogger. All Blogger sites look like Blogger sites. Right. But you can take some of the tools we're going to talk about today and customize it with really interactive conversational, you know, comment tools or you know, pull in media from other places and embedded video and, and everything else and really develop a place that as an author your fans are going to want to come and connect. But it's not all rosy. There are some no. definite cons when we go to this. Cons, yes. Well, it takes a lot more time. Just flat out, you know, I host, oh geez, probably about a dozen WordPress sites uh, up and down the uh, internet and every time there's a new plugin or an update or anything else, I have to go and maintain those. It, 
for the most part, no one is doing those for you. And I have to keep them up. If I don't actually go and post, they look stale. Somebody's going to hit it and go, oh, did, they, did Jeff die in a horrible accident? He hasn't done anything since last February. What's going on? And there's a lot more moving parts. There have been many times where I've logged in to just make a simple post and gone, what the is going on and spent two hours troubleshooting a weird plugin conflict or wondering where my content went or why comments were disabled or whatever. So it is a lot more complex to do, but there are a lot of rewards if you want to do it. Yeah, I'd agree, I'd agree on all those points. You know, you definitely have to roll your sleeves up. The ones we'll talk about today, um, nothing we're going to talk about today requires you to be a webmaster. You do not have to know how to write a lick of code with the things we're going to talk about today. Although I will tell you that having at least some understanding of the of basic code, and I'm thinking about HTML and CSS specifically, um, is probably not a bad idea, but not required. You will not have to write any code with the things we're talking about today, mostly, right? Yes, but is Webmaster still a thing? I mean, I haven't heard that in a, in a good five years. Like, holy cow. Showing my age. Showing my age. Right. Well, anyway, moving on. So uh, let's begin with, I guess, my personal favorite on the list, WordPress. And now, do you still have some WordPress sites, Eva, or have you completely abandoned them? Um, I personally do not have any WordPress sites. I do help maintain a couple, but they are not mine own anymore. Okay. Well, I know you're intimately familiar with this platform. Mm-hmm. So we're, we talked about WordPress as a hosted solution last time, where they, you could just sign up on WordPress. Let's get these backwards. WordPress.com is where you can sign up for your own, and WordPress.org is where you can get the free software. I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> or possibly strike that and reverse it. But <laughs> WordPress, is you can actually get a WordPress hosted site or download it all and build it yourself in all its glory, uh, which is what I do. If you do that, you have to pick a host. You have to find a internet hosting provider. Uh, where you can set up and install everything. Most of the larger ones have one-click installs. So if you go to DreamHost or GoDaddy or someone else, and there's a button, Install WordPress, and it'll do it for you. Uh, and then there's also sites like Pagely, page.ly, that, also, that maintain and set everything up for you there as well. Uh, if you set one of these things up, like I mentioned, you have to keep it updated. Uh, there's security plugins and issues. You don't want to snooze on these things and have someone take over your website and start broadcasting spam. That is a great way for Google to say this person is a moron and make you impossible to find. Yeah, and, and if just to reemphasize that for a moment, that's you will not understand how important that is until you screw up and get caught. Um, so if there is one thing we would recommend using a site like Pagely for, which automatically keeps you updated on the latest revision and keeps your plugins automatically updated for you, that's one good reason to do that. A little more expensive than some of the other do-it-yourself models, but if you would like it to be, oh, I can't say as secure as possible, but to have the, the least amount of security issues, um, consider a, a full-service host like Pagely that will do everything for you, unless, of course, you know what you're doing, and then just be sure to keep it all nice and updated. Yes. Um, and with the WordPress, you can install a huge range of themes. There's some like uh, Thesis and Premise. Um, and what are some of the other ones that are out there? I'm like, well, those are two good ones to start. There's a yeah. load of free ones. You can buy some pre premium ones. Excuse me. And they will make you, they'll help you set up a really elaborate, beautiful, integrated site right off the bat. They, they will. One of the things to keep in mind with this is you, you know, you're, you're an author, you get your brand, and you want to go forward and continue to make sure that you are the person you say you are. While all of these places that give you these these themes for your WordPress site, they do a great job for people like photographers or other sorts of um, you know pr pr professions, um, designers and such. There, I, I haven't found a really great author based theme. There are some, uh, but they tend not to be the most fantastic in the world, so you're probably going to wind up having to hack something up. But the good news is there are plenty of uh, designers out there who exclusively 
work in WordPress themes. They will take a base theme and convert it to your own custom thing so you truly look like an author with some of the things you need to do differently than, say, a photographer or the guy that runs a car wash. Authors have different needs, and so there are ways to customize it to get there. Yeah, WordPress has an incredible, a staggering support community out there. Um, anything that you want to do on WordPress, odds are somebody else has tried it. So you can search for a plugin, or you know, Evo mentioned learning a little bit of HTML and CSS. But you know, there's a lot of code out there that people post for free that you can download and try on your own. There aren't a lot of good author themes, but there are a lot of good authors using it. You can look at them, see how they're doing it, and set up something similar. Um, I know one of them is, uh, I believe, Mr. Will Wheaton. He uses uh, WordPress as well. Does he not? Yes, yes, he does. Him, Chris Brogan has been a longtime user of that. John Scalzi, and we could list on and on because it's probably one of the more popular themes, but uh, but but well well utilized by your community. Okay. You need to try to choke to death over here. Nope. Go. So, um, if you are less interested in blogging per se, but want an easy to maintain website that you can configure and re swizzle around. Uh, what are some good options for that? I'm more the WordPress guy, so I'm going to turn to you for a lot of these options, Evo. Yeah, this really um, is something I've been experimenting with. Um, not that I'm down on blogging, but I do most of my blogging on Google Plus these days. Uh, so uh, I like some of the less blog forward options that are out there. They don't completely eliminate blogging, but it's not the most popular thing. Uh, there are companies out there, and I'll name three of them real quickly. One is Squarespace. The other is Light, uh, Light CMS, all one word. And then Designly, spoiler alert, I'm on Designly now, the new site host that I'm working with right now. Uh, but there are lots more of these. These are very simple, what you see is what you get style of web um, development, if you will, or web hosting companies. You, you pay them anywhere from, I don't know, 10 bucks to 20 bucks a month, uh, and you can create the site. Unlike WordPress, you start with a blank page. You s there are themes, and you can install, and you can say, this is what my about page looks like. This is what my contact page looks like. This is what my portfolio page looks like. Some actually do have blogging systems built into them, but that's not the, the primary goal of these sites. It's much more of a... <laughs> I hate to say more traditional website because that's not it at all, but uh, it's, it's less about the blog and more about building your own presence the way you want it. Now, like WordPress, there are there is a robust design community. It's just not as big. Not as many people are utilizing the, these sites like Squarespace, especially the new players like CMS and Designly. So there's not a huge community out there of developers that, that can help you with that. But the good news is these are inherently customizable. You drag a big photo onto the page and boom, suddenly that's what you're background looks like. You drag a series of six photos uh, all together in one section and it knows you want a rotating carousel or it assumes you want a rotating carousel so the images just flip through there. So it's very intuitive amount of design, just really less about the, the, the blog world. Got it. Well, thank you for the tour there. So if somebody is looking to say, well, you know what, I want to try going you know, fully hosted somewhere in this U.com model, mm -hmm. what do you think would be a good place for them to start? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Designly thing, obviously, if they want to do that and host your own. That would be the one I, I like. Just came out of beta, however, and so there are some uh, inherent bugs with that, but that's okay. It's a, it's a good way to start there. Squarespace takes a little bit more of the programming style. Um, my lovely wife, Sheila D., is using Lights CMS right now and, and is a big fan of that one, so a simple way for you to get started is pick, pick one of those there. Now, we do have the option of what if you don't want to really – host your own website, but you just simply want to own your own domain name. You can do that too, right? Yeah, and go somewhere like GoDaddy.com, uh, which is a really interesting company all by itself, but they are really, really good at hosting domain names, and you can grab whatever domain you want to use. Um, make sure you have that, and you can, you know, repoint it and try different things. You know, point it at a WordPress uh, dot org hosted site for a while, get used to that, and then migrate it somewhere else and take your name with you if you like. It's really easy to redirect those anywhere you want to go. And the nice thing with that is if you once you own your own domain name, you, you don't have to make a decision right away. Um, 
I own various domain names and just point them somewhere else. Like I point them on my Google Plus page, for example. I, I, I need to check and see where one of mine goes. It may go to my old Facebook page. Once you own that name, anybody who types it in will automatically be sent over to you. It's by no means a fully hosted service, but if you've got your you know, author.com uh, name that you want to use or a series of your books, which we really don't recommend doing, simply buying that domain from Jeff mentioned GoDaddy. I've been using Hover.com uh, more recently. It's a not quite as cheap as GoDaddy, but oh, it, what you don't pay in money, you get you gain back in sanity, which is kind of cool. And yeah, you'll... see, you know, GoDaddy to me, it's like it's like a a challenge for a Greek hero. If you can make it through the GoDaddy purchase process and not accidentally buy five other things that you didn't need, that's you know that's like getting to the center of the the labyrinth and slaying the Minotaur. It's a Badge challenge. of honor. Yeah, Badge exactly, of honor. Exactly. Stuff of legend. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully we've given you some ideas, author, on exactly what it is you should be doing, whether you take the super simple routes from the two previous programs or you decide to go both feet in with your own domain name hosted somewhere. We'd love to hear about it. Um, if you've listened to this program and you decide to take our advice, because no one's ever done that before. Um, we would really like for you to drop us a line. So find us online. We're, we're all over the place and tell us. And uh, that's about it. I'll make sure to put links into all the various things we talked about. I'll figure out whether it was .com or .org on the WordPress thing, because we always get confused by that. Uh, and then hopefully you'll have plenty of resources to go out and do it. So, And again, please let us know how you did. All righty. That will do it for the program. You can find those show notes, by the way, at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We, oh crap, it's been a while since I've done this. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help indie authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. And that's a lot more succinctly done on our website, epublishunum.com. For my partner, Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show.